Hello, I'm Sasha Polak. I'm the writer director of Silver Haze, which will premiere this year at Barlianale in the Panorama section. Um, Silver Haze is about uh, a young woman uh, who's traumatized, but who's coming to terms with um, her past. Um, it's also a big love story, and uh, I hope you will enjoy it. <laughs> I just want to meet a normal guy. It just makes sense. I thought you were the one. <laughs> Hello. I opened the. I was in a fire when I was a kid. Why do you keep looking at me funny? You're beautiful. What have you been doing? What's your problem? Are you scared? I ain't scared. You're nervous. No. What the fuck's this? Got you me. little slags, mum! You fucking got shame on his fucking family. It's so embarrassing. That ain't your fault. My mum always gets like this this time of year. <laughs> Can you stop laughing about it? This is really serious. This is Frankie. She's going to stay for a few days, is that all right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> She's a really good woman. She drives me insane. At the very beginning, the essence of it was love. I mean, yeah, I know the body falls apart, the packaging. Got a lot of learning to do. My dad, after the fire, used to say to her, who's going to want to be with her? Frankie. Let go of that ball of anger that's holding you back. From truly living your life. Hi, and welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Borbobak, and this time we are discussing the film Silver Haze. Hi, Sasha. Welcome to the Teddy Award. Welcome to the Berlinale. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to be here with us. Maybe let's just start with. Uh, um, I know that this is the second time that you're working with Vicky Knight, who's playing the main character in the film, Frankie. Um, how did the two of you meet and how did this particular project came about? Um, so I met Vicky um, through the casting process for my previous feature film, Dirty God. And Dirty God is about a young woman who uh, has experienced an acid attack. So for that film, I was looking for somebody who was a burn survivor, a young woman who was a burn survivor. And through that search, um, we found Vicky. And after Dirty God, uh, after we finished it, we, we traveled all over the world with the film. So we, yeah, we went everywhere. And I got to know her really well. And she told me all her life stories. And um, I was sort of so impressed, like how how good she was as an actress, but also like in the Q and A's, how she was really comforting the people also with her own stories. And she really wanted to act again. And I was like, okay, we, you have such a beautiful story to tell. Let's, let's make a film that is more based upon your own life story. Right. So where do we meet um, Frankie as, as the fictional character in the film? Where, where is Frankie when, when we meet her in this story. She um, lives at home with uh, her brothers and sisters and mother and nephews uh, in Dagenham in London. She works as a nurse. She has a boyfriend. She has a best friend. And she is, um, she's okay, but she's searching and she is traumatized by what had happened in her past. So she, um, she has a lot of anger about what happened in her past. There was a fire and there was an arson attack and she doesn't have the answers to who did that. And she's constantly seeking revenge. She's very explosive um, in that moment. Um, and that is, I think, the way she was raised as well. There's a lot of love and there's humor as well, but there's also this explosiveness. Mm. 
um, and that is more sort of fighting rather than asking or asking questions. Yeah, right. Um, it was one particular aspect of the film that was very interesting to me is like um, how the concept of family or relating together in these micro communities um, was portrayed. Can you explain a bit about what was your approach to this and the different kind of familial models that the film operates with? So for this film, it was shot also where Vicky is raised in Dagenham and it was shot with her real sister. So her real sister is playing Leah and her real brother is playing her brother and her real nephew is also in there. So that is her, yeah, not her whole family construction, but part of it really, they all played a part in it. Um, and it's a family that that has its own difficulties, but has uh, his warmth as well. So when I was at home with, with in, at Vicky's real family, for instance, yeah. I was like surprised that they live in not such a big house, but all uh, sort of on top of each other, like uh, they mm -hmm. share rooms and even like they, they, they cannot, like London is so expensive that they can never like with uh, a, a salary of a nurse find a house of, for yourself. It's that's way too, too much money. Yeah. Um, but I asked Vicky, like, even if you could, would you then um, uh, sort of, yeah, find a house with your girlfriend or something? And she was like, N no, because she would miss uh, her family too much. Mm -hmm. So that was what I thought, like, even though there's like a lot of drama and fighting sometimes, but they still love each other so much. And, and uh, um, so that that is the start. And then she meets Florence and Florence takes her to sort of patchwork family that is not even her own uh, mother or father, um, but she lives with her nan and uh, her brother. And uh, there Frankie, sort of gets a new perspective of life mm -hmm. and um it's an it, these are people that are important to her and to show her different ways and different visions basically right um another a very important journey obviously besides this um very intense search for for an answer or any kind of I don't know resolution to to all that trauma that that she had to live through is coming to terms with her with her sexuality and being more open and more honest about about that. Um, how did you um, approach that together with um, with Vicky in in portraying that kind of turmoil and and that journey that that she t takes regarding her sexuality? Um. So Vicky herself is queer, and uh, so for me it was very clear that that it would be a relationship with with another woman. And I, before um, Silver Eyes, I did two episodes of uh, an Amazon TV show called Hannah, and I met Esme Creek Miles there, who is the lead in that, and that's sort of an action uh, TV show. Uh, so I asked Esme, like, do you want to be part of this crazy film uh, of mine? And and she said, yes, of, yes, I would love to. Uh, and with her and with, with Vicky together. So I wrote, at first I wrote a script that was 20 pages. And then before, like two weeks before we started shooting, I was like, I actually need to write a script because nobody will know what we're going to do. Yeah. Uh, so I wrote like very fast the script and with, with this script, we improvised uh, around it. Uh, and so for me, I w was searching for sort of honest, um, honest fights, honest, honesty in sort of this relationship. Yeah. And I wanted to see, show like a whole relationship with, its troubles and and uh, the the falling in love. I mean, it is the the portrayal of her first big love. I think that yeah, and it's yeah. not perfect, and there's 
they and they will not be together in the end um but this is the love that that uh, she will remember forever and will sort of um yeah sort of tells her about love in the first place i think and what what yeah. it is and what she yeah what she yeah. wants but let's unpack a bit this relationship between um between uh, Frankie and Florence because as you say it's a it's a big love there is like a lot of passion there is a lot of love and care in it but obviously as you said it has its um, ups and downs as well and it it is it is it is a very intense relationship um guide us through a bit their their very intense connection that they have in the film so Vicky is traumatized, or Frankie in the in the film. She's traumatized, and um, she. But she's a fighter, uh, and she fights through life. And Florence, she sort of gives up. Like in the beginning, when we meet her, she already tried to commit suicide in a way. So she's also like they're both very troubled yeah. characters. I was interested as well in like when when two women fight to each other, if they are like, if they become physical or whatever, like who, who's stronger, you know, who's, yeah. who's gonna, how this fight looks like. Um, so that, that was all sorts of, of parts that I was, was, yeah, what was looking for in, in, in this relationship. They are from a different background as well. Um, I think Florence has, more chances but it's very self-sabotaging yeah. um, so that's something that 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 i was also in this relationship um yeah investigating mm. yeah and i mean obviously for all of these characters that we encounter like trauma is is very key and it's like a very formative element in in how they they act or how they relate um to each other um, and I was really wondering that how did you look at the medium of film or, or the moving image as something um, that can work um, maybe through trauma or not only portraying, but kind of working through certain traumatic events as well? Mm. It was because of the, we had a lot of, obstructions with this film in the sense yeah. that that we were um it was a very low budget film and i had from the beginning i wanted to have like a small crew um but as many shooting days as possible to mm -hmm. to sort of um figure things out along the way that was my because um, before this, I, I did that TV show, and after I'm now working again on a, a, a big budget TV show. So those are very sort of set uh, in stone ways. Yeah. So I felt like I, I want to be free, mm -hmm. uh, and I want to look at these actors and work with them and, and create something together and feel really creative in the making mm -hmm. process. But with that, of course, we had a crew which was almost a documentary crew basically um and i said i don't want any makeup on set i don't want any wardrobe i want none of that no uh so they brought they are wearing their own clothes uh they did their own makeup if they wanted to uh have makeup on so that that was a bit of the 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 thing, but then I also said like I don't want it to look like a documentary. I want it to look visually interesting, um, and I also want to sometimes feel like like you're you're high yourself, basically. They're um, yeah, they're in this sort of love, but they're also stoned sometimes, and it it must mm -hmm. feel like 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 that, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, and as you mentioned, like that visually, it was also important to you to not have this documentary feeling that it would be like very recognizably like fiction feature uh, film. Uh, can you tell us a bit about like your approach to that? What was the vision like behind the 
the form of the film and also about the camera work because I thought that was very interesting how um, fluid that was and, and how that played into into the shaping of the narrative. Yeah, so of course because we didn't have like a grip department or anything um, so that my, my yeah the first idea with the with the dp and me was so we're going to shoot most of it on a movie um so that is why it's like um more more okay <laughs> sorry so we shot mo most of it on a movie um so it's m more steady cam it has more this steady cam floating feeling and even like in this very small apartment with a lot of people we use the movie while normally I wouldn't even think of it of using Steadicam in in like on the birthday of uh, Leia when she gets the f phone. Um, it's all floating, and um, so that was the first idea that I think thought like, okay, don't just want to have like a handheld camera and run behind mm. the actors. I, that is not going to be the style. I've seen too many of those kind of films. Yeah. Um, I want to film I mean sometimes it can feel like kitchen sink reality in a way but I also really want to escape from that and I want to feel to be uh, at a party and use ecstasy and um, have that feeling and yeah. um, so so it should look like that and, and that so that was mainly trying to be as much with the character as possible uh, in her mind and, and to have these dreamy sequences. Yeah, uh, it was also, yeah, as you say, that um, um, the characters are often like stoned and um, like um, um, Frankie has this little weed plant that um, it's like she's very, I don't know, it, it was very interesting to see how she uh, she was so caressing and soft uh, with uh, with that plant and how important the plant was and then of course the the movie is called silver haze um can you explain a bit about this um this role of of this plant um in the film the plant it grows um it starts small and it grows it grows mm -hmm. then it dies <laughs> in the end but um uh, it was sort of it 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 is it is not about that. It's more the feeling of it. I think um, that that she is uh, stoned in, in a way, and it's part of her life. And some of it is sort of a tunnel vision. Even if you, mm. um, if you, yeah, it's sort of her only mind is uh, trying to find the the person who did this arson attack and 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 blaming somebody who. Who, and I think I, I felt like to that sometimes it can be very focused, hyper focused, and then you are uh, floating again, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's more. I think to me it, it's more um, poetic in a way than than that. It's sort of story wise uh, a, a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Um, yeah. The, as as we said and and as it came through that um yeah like the film can be very heavy at points because all of this trauma all the different characters have um have their own like very intense uh, struggles but then uh, somehow by the end of the film Frankie reaches a point where um where it seems so that she is able to i don't know free herself somewhat from from all all, all of the hardship um, was this important to you and was this from the beginning your intention to kind of, I don't know, give some sort of a salvation to uh, to the main character and, and provide some hope um, with the end of the film or did this come through the process? Um, partly through the process but also I I wanted it for the character, and I didn't want to end it in a in a negative way. And I wanted to have hope for her because uh, I love this character, and uh, I think she deserves some hope. And also, I felt like to me it was important that the film was not so heavy. You know, there's humor in it, and yeah. and um, 
and I hope people can laugh with with the characters as well and and so that's important to me as well but but what happened with at the end with the with the young boy um where I felt like the future is giving hope that like, like her brother is um welcoming her that is something that that happened I mean that was scripted but then when I saw it, I really felt touched by the young young boy even more with with than with the father. We had like another scene where she actually went in and she spoke with her dad. And so the 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 film during the process we made those mm. uh, side steps where it could have gone also in, in a different way. Yeah. Uh, but to me, this was a positive ending and a sort of the future um, will be brighter in a way. Yeah. Sasha, thank you very much uh, for this uh, for this lovely interview and thank you for the film as well. Um, yeah, I wish you all the best for the Berlinale. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so happy to... This is the the fourth film I have in Berlin, Berlin and I lived in Berlin as well. Oh, I did a residence. So I'm so... Well, lovely. Happy. Then welcome back. We are We are happy to have you back. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs>